but it's going to be awesome. Almost done, almost done. Got to clean up a sweet potato. I got to catch up. Let's do this. My glasses are slipping. Okay, and I got a little cleanup to do on this guy. So just working with my paring knife, cutting off the weirdness. There was a little weirdness. Here's a little weirdness. Getting weird. They're weird. Here are weird. All right. We're getting there. Come on, potato. What the heck? Huh. Very odd. I'm really uh, throwing down hard here. I wanted a little sweet potato in here. Come on, it's good, especially with duck. Speaking of that duck, we're gonna be basting in uh, 12 minutes. And I'm just gonna baste it with a little of my uh, bacon fat, my duck fat that I have. It might have even generated enough fat to, uh, boy. Might have even generated enough fat in the bottom of that pan to baste. Boy, I don't have much of a sweet potato there, guys. I'll go ahead and cut it up and put it in the mix, though. About the same size as the other pieces. Those are going into cold water. So there's the pan. And I don't turn on the fire until I get everybody in there. I am not adding salt. I want to repeat, I am not adding salt at this time. And I'm going to go ahead and fire that up. It's water, so I can crank it. Okay, so it's on 11 right now, the highest temp that fire can get. Can't get any higher. I think I'll uh, get rid of a little water there. That's a little fuller than I need. It'll take longer to cook. I need just enough water to get this done. Let me take another look at that. Yeah, beautiful. I've got a potato sticking out over there, but they're all underneath water now. I've got a lid on there so it comes up a little quicker. I leave the uh, salt out. I'm gonna put salt in later and I'm gonna do just a quick little rinse of my board and my knife here. It's got potato starch on it. And then we're gonna look at our next uh, little thing while these potatoes are kind of rolling along, okay? By the way, other ingredients to these mashed potatoes, I'm gonna do a little salt, pepper, nutmeg and um, uh, uh, butter and that's it. I'm not putting anything in. I don't do milk. I don't really do cream or things like that. I find that when I add liquids, the more water that the liquids contain, like, you know, milk or it's pretty watery, right? The more water that's in there, the more the starch granules will soak that water up and set up like cement. Okay. So when I use fatty things like butter and maybe sour cream or something along those lines, or, you know, even heavy cream is better than milk. Um, when I use those fatty things, um, that, that, mashed potato stays much more pliable. It doesn't set up like cement, like, like milk, like water-based milk does, right? Um, another thing that I often use is yogurt, and I've got a tiny bit of yogurt in the uh, fridge today that I'm just going to throw in there. It's quarantine kitchen, and I just, I'm always trying to manage my refrigerator, right? And if I have a little yogurt, oh, there's an ounce, let's throw it in my mashed potatoes. So uh, yogurt is another one of those creamy things that uh, shouldn't, like, add water to the mix. I want dry, starchy potatoes. And that's why those, those starchy potatoes are so great. Think about a baked potato. When you bust it open, it's the same kind of potato. You bust that open, and it's like this dry, mealy starch. That's what I want in the pot right here as this cooks off. That dry, mealy starch is going to soak up a bunch of butter and fat and, like I said, bad stuff that is so, so good, okay? So uh, four ingredients, I'll go over those ingredients again in a little bit. I'm still cleaning up here and we're gonna get into the next phase here, all right? Do, do, da, da, do. Scene change. Da, da, da. Do, 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 do. Big Hollywood, big band cruising in right now. And uh, maybe a little commercial, uh, the Osmobile Skylark, I don't know whatever commercials are on TV. I haven't had TV in like 30 years now, I think. We pulled the cable so long ago, I never see commercials. I know nothing of pop culture. <laughs> I am so not street. All right, my board is almost ready. And we are almost ready to do a nice tasty little, uh, it's kind of a, a 
relishy side for the thing here. I didn't want to do add another like cooking dish to the thing because I got a roast going. I, got, I had that whole morning today. Um, I, I got a roast going. I got potatoes going. I just wanted a simple, simple side. So I'm just going to kind of make a quick little relish, but I did want to kind of show off some of the produce from uh, Oak, Park's mark, uh, Oak Park Farmer's Market while I'm at it because they had some really, really nice produce out there this weekend. All right, so I'm almost, almost, almost ready to get back into it. I got that little chef OCD thing, and if there's a bunch of clutter around here, I'll be going nuts, okay? So let me look around. Yeah, it's all looking fine, okay? So um, let me kind of show you what I have to work with here um, from the market, okay? I, uh, and I think all of it is appropriate. Um, I'm just going to take one little look at my pot here. I'm going to turn that down one notch. And this pot's still cranked. I'm just still trying to get it up to a boil. There it is. We're not there. Uh, but a few of the ingredients I got. I got some of these beautiful French radishes, okay? I got some fresh peas. They had fresh peas out there. And uh, um, I've got uh, some cherries, okay? I got several cherries. I'm gonna just like, clean most of them. Uh, so I did something very similar to this uh, about a week ago. Um, and I'm gonna do the same here, okay? I'm gonna do some cherries, some peas, some radishes. I've also, a couple of other ingredients here, I've got the radish greens. How cool is that? I'm gonna work those in at the very last second. So it's kind of a salad-y, relish -y kind of thing. So I'm gonna ship in on those. Um, and I have, like I got a ton of cherries already cleaned, by the way. I've got some roasted bell pepper that I just have around and I'm gonna work that into the salad. Again, I'm managing my refrigerator here. And so I'm gonna work that into the dish uh, just to use that up. Again, just beautiful roasted red bell pepper that I had around. And uh, let's see what else I'm putting in my salad. Oh yes, oh yes, my favorite, some nice sweet red onion. If I'm doing cold applications, I want red onion. If I'm doing cooking applications, I usually use a uh, yellow onion for those, okay? White onions I like for um, Mexican salsa. They're very sweet. So I'm gonna start putting things aside and I'm just gonna work through all of this stuff and assemble it into one kind of nice relish. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop a little bit of my, uh, I'm gonna make a quick vinaigrette out of a little bit of balsamic vinegar, which I have, okay? And which is great with duck, by the way. Duck is, is really good, all wild game. The, the accompaniment for it, the classic accompaniment for wild game and duck is considered winged game, okay? Uh, classic uh, accompaniment is, is sweet and sour, right? Uh, fruity things, fruity compotes and gastriques, if you're familiar, like it's a, 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 like a vinegary a tart uh, fruit juice that's kind of cooked into a sweet syrup, right? Um, things like that, duck all orange, right? You know, those, those sweet and tart preparations are perfect for, for wild game. You see it with venison, you see it with, you know, uh, <laughs> duck, you see it with badger, raccoon, I imagine, I don't know. I've never gone there before, but it's classic wild game thing, sweet and sour, okay? So that's where we're going with this balsamic vinegar thing. Uh, and, and I'm gonna start assembling it right now. So let me find this uh, alleged bowl that I brought along to the mix. And I'm just gonna start putting things in this bowl as I'm waiting for potatoes to come up to a boil. And we're also waiting for our uh, um, duck to be basted, okay? So here we go. I wanted to kind of show you how I cleaned up those cherries and uh, uh, I'm gonna add them back into the cherry bowl and I'm actually not gonna put the cherries into the salad until the very end because cherries will bleed, okay? So uh, what I did with the cherries is uh, I pull off all the stems. I'll give them a quick wash because I don't remember washing this fella, this batch. And so there are some cherries on the ground. And I'm gonna use a, a tiny little paring knife that I've got right here, the one that I was using for my sweet potatoes. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of cut around the pit on these cherries, kind of a rounded cut. I've done this before, I did it about a week ago. And that's a clean piece of cherry. And I'm gonna just kind of kick that aside. And this has a pit in it. And I'm just gonna go through all of those. And I'm just gonna cut one side off of those cherries. La 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 la. Bum, 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 bum. A little uh, conga line music would be good right about now. All right. And there's the last of the paring knife work. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to use a melon baller to pull out the pits from the other half of those. 
the other hemisphere, if you will. So there's a pit, boom. Those are all clean on that side. There's a pit. And there's a pit. You guys get the idea. It's fun. Actually, it's time consuming. It's not hard though. That's the thing. None of this cooking stuff is hard. Even the stuff that I did this morning was really quick and easy. It was all four or five ingredients. It was all mostly technique. Just talking about technique. I don't expect anybody to watch this stuff and become a chef or anything, but um, watch this stuff and become exposed to things. Yeah, you know, and then later on you get a recipe and hey, I'm already exposed to this. I kind of get what's going on. And lo and behold, you start cooking before you know it, okay? I'm gonna get rid of that little um, melon baller. Parisian scoop, by the way, is another word for that. And I'm gonna cut some of these cherries down. I wanna point something out, right? The cherries are kind of big. The radishes are big. I missed a cherry. The radishes are real big, but you know what's not big? Those fresh peas. And so I'm gonna cut everything the same size as the fresh peas. I can't really cut them down. I'm gonna get everything kind of in that same size. My potatoes are boiling now. Let's take a look at them. Open that lid away from yourself. And I'm just gonna keep that lid off. And every once in a while, I'm gonna use a paring knife and I'll jab a potato and make sure that they're okay. I'll give them a little poke right now just to make sure they're all submerged in the water. Love that word, submerge. And there they go, they keep on rolling. They muddle through. I'm gonna keep on going on these cherries. We're almost done with cherries. And there's no big hurry here. We got some time. In fact, we have so much time. I should stop after this last cherry right here. And let's take a sip of wine and let's see who's out there. Because we got to cook these taters off. So let me uh, do this. Quarantine kitchen, everybody. Welcome again. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. This is uh, uh, really for my sanity more than it is for you. Well, you know, uh, uh, it keeps me off the streets. I'll, I'll tell you that. Let's see if I uh, got any comments out there. Let's see. I see my, uh, I see Diana out there. All right, Badger. She, <laughs> you like that, huh? Okay. Roberta, Ms. Roberta out there. Oh my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, whenever I see Ms. Roberta, I have to take a drink. It's the drinking game around here. All right. And uh, let's see, that's all I see here. I can't uh, manipulate these comments very well. Yeah. Ooh, radish greens. Yes. Yeah, I like the radish greens as well. Uh, they bring the heat, don't they? Uh, I really like those radish greens. In fact, I, they're, they're kind of out on my counter right now. I'm glad I saw that little comment about those. I'm gonna put those back in the fridge. Radish greens. And um, again, the cherries are all done. I just kind of wanted to show you that. Um, I am going to leave them out of the mix for now. Uh, the peas, I can go ahead and put them right into my salad bowl. So there they go. That's a lot of peas. And oh, lo and behold, that's my roast. Let's check it out. Turn that off. I'm going to scoop my potatoes over. Turn it on down. And I still want those potatoes rolling though, OK? So I'm going to have them on, uh, oh, one of my favorite temperatures, about 7 out of 10. I'm going to turn off the heat on this side of the uh, of the mix. And these potatoes are coming back up. I'm going to pull out my duck, and we're going to take a look. Ooh, I don't like this big towel. Little towel, please. Here we go. And we're going into that oven, and I'm going to pull this really, really quick. Oh, yeah. Oh, it smells so darn good in here, okay? Let me get my fat. And I've just got a little extra fat to kind of brush on over the top of this. And it is yielding more duck fat in the bottom, but I think there's a lot of juice down there. And I don't really want liquid. I want fat right now as I'm basting. It's coming along beautifully. And if I could kind of zoom in a little bit, you can see the bones are picking up color as well. So later on when I make a stock, those bones are going to have that flavor in the mix already. Look at that duck. 
it is beautiful and it's going to slice up perfectly. Well, I don't know about perfectly, but it's going to slice up nicely. Okay. I think we'll, uh, we'll have ourselves a dinner there. Okay. So let me get this back in the oven. I'm going to open that door and I'm going to get it right back in there. Let me kind of turn that camera. You can kind of see that right now in and close. I'm going to turn that pan and the door's closed. Okay. Save that heat. That's you're going to want that heat. All right, so I'm kind of moving things around. I'm going to move my uh, basting oil over to the other side. Again, it's like chicken, duck fat. It's all appropriate flavors for that. And again, I want to emphasize, you don't want to use like stock to baste with, not a liquid. You need a lipid, a fat for basting, okay? Next thing I want to do is I want to cut up my French radishes, okay? I love the look of these little guys. Let me hold them up. Just these elongated radishes. You've seen them. All the Hollywood celebrities are always carrying these radishes around in their pockets. So um, let me cut these guys up, and we're going to mix them in with our salad. Yes, Hollywood celebrities with radishes in their pockets. It was in the Inquirer. Okay, I'm gonna take off that little nub at the end there. It's just a little funky. And I'm gonna split them and I want that little long piece on there. I love that kind of stuff. Well, I might take a little of it off, but I do want a little of that little nub sticking out there. I'll trim it slightly, cut them in half. Trim it slightly, cut it in half. And la la la, all the way down. This one has a little more, more of the green on there. And there it is, and down to the bottom. Radishes, beautiful French radishes came from that Oak, uh, Oak Park Farmer's Market this weekend. I love them. And just three bucks for a bunch, organic. I think I'm going to actually uh, cut these down one more and make them into uh, lengths. And uh, I think I'll like that size a little bit better. I just changed my mind on this, right? Changing horses in the middle of the stream, bad chef. And then I'm going to kind of go across them and I'm going to cut them in pieces about the size of my peas. Remember, I can't change the size of the peas. So these are little radish nubs that are going in with my pea relish. That sounds delicious. Pea relish. That's not the dressing. La la la. Okay, right across and keep them going. I think one of these I need to cut down. Oh, I did. He's good. Again, I don't want to do too many of these at one time, maybe about four or five pieces at once. The more I try and do at one time, the less accurate you're going to get. And I want pieces to be a fairly even size. You can see I'm not going for perfect pieces here. This is quarantine kitchen, okay? I want nice even sizes that don't create a lot of waste. You'll never see me doing perfect dices here in quarantine kitchen unless it's some kind of a a nice practical class, right? Okay, so there's radish and peas together at last. The public's been clamoring for that. It's beautiful. Just look at that. Just that together. I love it, okay? Um, let's see. Next thing I want to get are some uh, beautiful little purple onion juliennes in there, okay? So I'm going to go ahead. I've got this ginormous onion that I bought, and I got to trim it down because it had a little tumor right there. So I did a little microsurgery on this one. I'm going to trim this, and I'm going to trim it this way. And that's going to leave all of this other stuff to work with, okay? Also, I have kind of a funky little piece in the center there that isn't going to make a very nice julienne, okay? They're just oddball pieces. I don't think I can get much julienne out of that. So all of this is going to give me really nice julienne for my salad. I'm going to pop out that funky piece, and then I'm going to just go across. You know what? I think I'll cut it down one more to make even shorter little julienne pieces, and they're going to match the size of that pea a little bit better. Everything is kind of that pea size. So I'm going across and I've got these perfect little pieces that all match, okay? Little red onion. I think I'll go a little thinner on those guys. La la la, la la la. Okay, and I've got a little bit more here. There's a lot of red onion. I like onions. I'm one of those guys. And then here's a little more. Bum, 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 bum. Get back, honky cat. Bum, bum, bum. I've had that song stuck in my head for two days. And in goes my red onion. Take a look at how that looks against everything. I've got the purple, I've got the 
the light red, the bright red, light red. Let's just call it pink, okay? Light red is pink. And I think I probably got a little, uh, just plenty of the uh, um, red onion in there. I've got a little piece there that I don't think I'm going to incorporate. Oh, look at that. I had an extra radish that happened to me last time too. I'm going to incorporate him. He got away. That exact thing happened last time I did radishes. Funny. I uh, love the look of this so far. Peas, radish, and the purple onion. I'm going to go over here and poke my mashed potatoes here in a minute with a poking implement, with a poking stick. Uh-huh. Okay, here's my poking stick. And I'm just gonna get over here and kind of give them a kind of shake them out. Okay, my uh, um, sweet potato is still quite firm, if you will. My uh, uh, russet potatoes are still quite firm as well, but they are just cruising along beautifully. I think I will uh, throw a lid on that, kind of uh, uh, slow that down slightly because it's got the lid. And we're gonna let that uh, uh, steam a little bit better on the top there. There was a few little nubs sticking out. I really wanted them to steam, okay? So that's gonna keep on rolling over there and we are still working on our salad here, okay? Let's see, other ingredients, ah, yes, ah, yes. Um, the last thing that I wanted to kind of throw in, well, two other things, but this one is my uh, red bell pepper. I wanna add that in just to use it up. Again, I just had it. And again, we're not doing recipes here. This is just everything I really picked up from the market the other day. I uh, kind of like the size of my red onion, so I'm going to cut these bell peppers in a similar size. So I'm cutting them across, and then I'll cut them across the other way, or cutting them lengthwise, I should say, and then I'll cut them across the other way. And there's just a little oddball piece. Scooby Snacks. Okay, so I'm gonna take about two or three pieces at once and go across and make little bits of red bell pepper. And this is another one that I'm gonna hold out until the end because that red bell pepper flavor will just permeate everything. So they're gonna be about the last thing I throw in. This is all getting, I'm making this beautiful mixture and I, I gotta say, I'm gonna be throwing balsamic vinegar on it and uh, it's gonna just destroy the color of all of this stuff, but the flavor is, is very, very appropriate for what we're doing. That balsamic vinegar, it's sweet, it's spite, it's sour, it's that perfect accompaniment for game animals and winged game most especially like duck, okay? So let me get my little container for that uh, bell pepper. And we're holding off on cherries and red bell pepper for now. And we're also holding off on that uh, vinegar uh, and also the other ingredient that I'm gonna use is just some of the duck fat. Some of the drippings from the bottom of this are gonna be the oil for my vinaigrette, for my balsamic vinaigrette. It's, uh, it's, it's gonna be quite, quite delicious. Okay, so that is all kind of kicking back. Let's take a little sip and see who's out there, okay? Do this again. And let's see, oh, Mr. Burt is out there. Good to see you, brother. Let's get another one of these. Oh dear, I'm about out. Okay, I may have to get another little uh, another little sip here. Let me just do that. Ah, quite frankly, we're uh, waiting for potato to cook. That's gonna be our next step. Uh, let's see, oh dear. Oh my. Well. I don't see anything open in there, so I'm going to go for a, uh, a Monte Rio Cellars. I got this from uh, Amy Gravish at the Pit One Bar in Davis. And uh, Monte Rio Cellars, Susan Valley Dry White Zinfandel. So many white Zinfandels that got a bad reputation in the uh, like 70s and 80s because white Zin was like super, super sweet. It was like just garbage wine. And um, uh, uh, nowadays you're getting, you're seeing more and more of these like dry blush wines like this. And this just happens to be one of them, okay? Let me go get this guy open real quick and uh, we're gonna have a little taste of this one and see what we shall see, okay? I'm gonna use a, uh, a waiter's jack if you guys are familiar. Let's see, I got Ms. Roberta. Oh gosh, I don't have anything to drink. Oh gosh. And I'm gonna go ahead and work the worm into that cork straight down the center. You gotta get it centered on there. Remember the tip of the corkscrew is not on center, it's off to the side. So you gotta kind of have it off to the side. And then 
Let me get this on, right? I've got a two, uh, uh, a kind of a hinged waiter's jack here, we call this. And I'm gonna put in the shorter uh, uh, side of that first to kind of jack it up, jagging it up. And then I'm gonna use the taller one, the taller side of it to jag it the rest of the way. And then it's very rude to pop a cork. We're just going to just barely just squeeze that out. Okay, just squeezing it out. Oh yeah, Mr. Berg, good to see you out there, brother. Let's take a little taste of this and see what we shall see. La 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 la. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Okay. And uh, while we're uh, uh, sipping, we're going to clean up a little bit. We're going to taste. We're going to talk. We're going to have a nice time. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Duck and mashed potatoes. Yes. Are you guys ready for this? Don't forget, if you are liking these vids, go over to my uh, uh, my industry cooking classes page over on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe over there. I got to drop some traffic over there, baby. And uh, we're getting more and more views over there. It's basically a culinary school, right? This is all the culinary lectures that I did back in the old days when we had a world. Um, now I'm just doing them at home. And, and everything I'm talking about here is everything people were paying, was paying you know, big bucks to go see and, and to go learn, right? This is the standard cooking technique. And so I'm hoping you're all getting it. Check out that page over there, guys. You got to You got to do it. Okay, here we are with our um, uh, blush white Zinfandel, our dry white Zinfandel. By the way, I hope everyone knows that when we say dry with wine, that means unsweet, the absence of sweet. This is very easy to drink. Oh my goodness, I'm going to get in trouble with this one. It's not so tart and acidic uh, as what I've been drinking lately. Um, let me step off camera just for a minute. Scene change, be right back. La, 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 la. And we are gonna give another check to this pot over here. I gotta check these potatoes out. That's what I'm talking about, okay. You guys see what I did there? You see all that stalling I was doing, okay? So I think we're about there. I think almost everything is ready with this salad, okay? I've got the bell peppers to do. Let me kind of get my screen back here. I've got my bell peppers, okay? Those are gonna get added. I've got my cherries that are going in. I've got some balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna hit this with a little fresh cracked pepper. Oh, and I also have my uh, radish greens. Let me cut those really, really quick. Those are also going to stay on the side. I don't want to toss them all together yet because they're just going to mush. And I'm just doing a quick wipe down. Sorry, I bumped everybody. My apologies. Goodness. And I just got a lid that I don't need. I'm almost cleaned up here, guys. We're almost ready to go. All right. La, 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 la. What was I going to do? It was the radish greens. So let me go through these radish greens. I'll show them to you. These guys are super pungent. If you like radish, you'll love radish greens because they have a great big radishy taste, okay? They got a great radish flavor. So I'm going through and uh, I'm pulling the big heavy part of the stem out of these and leaving the leaf behind. You see how I'm folding the leaf and just pulling the stem? Let's show you that again. Fold the leaf. Pull the stem. Boom. Got it? Okay. So that's all I'm kind of doing here. These radish greens, uh, not only are they nice and pungent for like a big gamey thing, duck is a big flavor and it can stand up to radishes and things like that. But uh, um, it's also super, super nutrient dense to eat these greens. This always goes in the garbage. You might have seen me last week. I was using some of these radish greens. I was using carrot tops and things like that. Um, people buy lettuce and throw this kind of stuff away. And it's really a shame, OK? I'm going through this, actually. I think what I'm going to do is just tear these leaves. I was going to cut them. I was going to ship an autumn. Pretty fancy. But I think what I will do is just tear, gently tear the delicious tender leaves to throw in later. They're beautiful, okay? Just very rough, simple, gorgeous. There they are. And uh, let's do the rest. I'm being gentle. We're being gentle, okay? And there they are, okay? They're beautiful. So I've got everything I need for my salad done. And it's time to uh, work my magic with the potatoes here. 